आपको खराब लगता है कल में खुले लेके गई हूँ तो एक अच्छा चीज अच्छा भविष्य करके दिखलाएंगे बोली के ना ऊपर वाला हम लोग जन्म दिया है I'm going to start with updates. Let's talk about Kiran. Where is Kiran now and how is she doing? Kiran is in a much better space. She's now almost uh, 20. She's going to be 20 um, next next year, early next year. Uh, and she is a young woman looking for her place in the world. You are making this film not knowing whether or not Kiran is going to appear on camera. So you're making the entire movie unsure of how that's going to play out. What were the conversations that you had with Karen and her family and then with the larger community of people who work with survivors of sexual assault about what was right and what you felt you needed to discuss and consider before you made a decision? The the film that I ended up making was not the film that I had set out to make. Uh, and the film that I had set out to make was a film that was focusing on the work of the NGO. They were working with men and boys. They had started a gender sensitization program across the state of Jharkhand. So the focus of of my film was really that that program. And uh, and and the way I came across the story was because Ranjit was was somebody that was enrolled in that program. As were the rapists, actually. The focus for me for the longest time was masculinity, and and initially I was going to actually weave this story and two other stories together, you know, uh, and I felt that this this film would be the spine of a larger piece, a larger piece on masculinity. It was only once I got into the edit room and we'd been editing for about two and a half years mm -hmm. that we realized, you know, we really had two separate films in the material, and this particular story just needed its own filmic universe. It was demanding. It was demanding that, um, and that's when you know the the idea of how to, uh, you know, how to honor her humanity, how to find a way to obviously not reveal her while at the same time not obliterating her humanity or ne negating her humanity uh, so that was a that was a long process and it took a couple of years and we tried many many different things everything felt ethically wrong you know i mean and, like blurring her face out or using yeah. you know somebody else's voice or whatever the workarounds would be yeah Yeah, um, we we literally actually we did a number of things. So we we you know we did this very beautiful creative blur. We tried animation. We literally did give her a, a, a new face, like with with using uh, the face of an actor. Um, and everything felt wrong, you know. And but it was obviously it was you know it was it was we had to do what we had to do. And because it took so long for us to make the film, she'd become an adult. And so we started bringing up this idea, you know, and her her parents were very proud of her and they didn't want her to to be hidden. Uh, but it was clear to them, and it was clear to us that if, if she was going to come forward, it was going to have to be her choice. So we showed her the fine cut of the film. And as soon as she saw it, she she agreed. And and when I asked her why she chose to come forward, why she wanted to, why she wanted to do this, it was really emotional. And, and she said that for her, She herself couldn't believe her courage as a wow. 13-year-old child. When she saw the film, she was in awe of her 13-year-old self, and she felt that that 13-year-old self needed to be celebrated. You know, something else happens in the making of this film, and that is that you and your crew become targets of what feels like a potentially dangerous situation, mm -hmm. and it's proof of how seriously the village is taking this story and your work documenting this story, but it also changes the story itself because now you are part of the story. I realized fairly early on that we were having an impact. And, you know, we all know that there is no such thing as, as absolutely kind of objective uh, verite truth because, You know, the, the truth is, is as soon as you turn a camera on on something, you're impacting reality, you're, you're having an effect. What I realized over the course of making this particular film is this, 
there, there's a sort of triangle, you know, like there's there's the there's the story that we're capturing, uh, there's the the capturer, and then there's the viewer, and we're all involved in this kind of ethical triangle, right? And I felt that by including it, it was sort of forcing us as consumers of yeah. images to understand that what we were, uh, you know, that we were that the um, uh, the capturing of images also there's an ethical there's an ethical consideration you know does everybody in the film know what the stakes are because the fact that um Mudhalik allows you the access he does is remarkable given what he says or does he not even think that what he says is that bad for him to say what he's saying it's it's who he is. It's what he believes. You know, just as I believe what I believe because I was raised in a particular environment in a particular time and place. Just as you believe mm -hmm. what you believe, and, and everyone else here does as well. You know, he is just speaking who he is, and that's why people are unguarded. For me, it was very very important to give him a clear arc because I found him to be actually a very complex human being. Um, and you know, so at the end when he when he says. Uh, they did wrong and they deserve to be punished, but they're all children from my village. You know? That is where you understand him. That's where you understand him. Even if you disagree with him, that's where you understand him. He sees everybody as Absolutely. a child. Absolutely. And, and the other thing about him that's so extraordinary, so I was terrified to show him the film. I was so afraid to show him the film. But I showed him the film, and I was surrounded by a number of male activists um, as well. We, you know, we, all, we decided to show him the film together. Uh, and we were kind of nervous, but he loved the film. He absolutely loved the film. And he said that he was, after watching the film, he was ashamed of himself. That's amazing. And he felt that everyone in the community needed to see the film in order to see what they had put this family through. I want to ask you about her parents. Without knowing much about their education or their background, they seem very astute. Mm -hmm. Her mom says, if we don't stand up for ourselves, they'll always try to push us around. I mean, she could be mimicking civil rights speakers. How did they get to be those people? Were they born with those beliefs? Were their own parents people who made sure that they understood that? Mm -hmm. Because it certainly runs contrary to the thinking in the village. Yeah, I get asked that question a lot, actually, you know? And, and, I, always, uh, and I always think what it is really is that that's how change happens. There's always one person, right? This is, this is how we make change. There's always this one human being that decides that they're going to stand up. And, and in this film, it was Ranjit. For us, what became very clear as we were filming is, is that the drama actually was playing itself out on Ranjit's face. Mm -hmm. His face just spoke volumes, and that's where you know, that's where the story was, you know? So it was just uh, really just allowing him to be, um, you know, allowing it to be his, his, his journey. We obviously have Munalik saying, I regret what I did, mm -hmm. but is there a change in thinking that's incremental in how men and boys are starting to think about their behavior. Yeah, I mean, without without a doubt, absolutely. I mean, you know, Mahinderji himself, who's an extraordinary human being and such a feminist and so evolved, was Mutalik mm -hmm. 10 years ago, wow. you know, or 20 years ago, rather, right? I mean, he comes from that. So absolutely, you know, the, the, change, is, the change is possible. The, the program that they were running, I mean, what they, what they did was they were actually creating leaders within the communities them, themselves, right? So, um, uh, you know, so they, they, would, they would take these men and really work with them for a number of years, very, very extensively. And the point is to... The work that they were trying to do was actually to show that masculinity and that patriarchy is oppressive for men. Right. Right. It's not just. It's not just about uh, you know the abuse of women, right, or the violence against women. It's actually it's as you were we were talking about earlier, right? This idea of constructs. Right. And and um, and the fact that constructs you know, by their very nature, they impose definition on you, you know? They, they constrict you. They, they actually prevent you from understanding your true self and your real humanity. And that was the point, you know, that was the point of that program. 
And of course, you're not going to change people in three or four months, right? It's going to take, it's going to take years. I'm going to ask you this last question, and that's about how you photograph Kieran in the last quarter of the film. She is radiant, and I don't know if it's something that you do with lights or your cameras, or is it just her? Because we see her at the beginning of the film in a shell, and we see her at the end come alive. I mean, it was so powerful, you know, that moment where she's... Um, where she's getting ready in front of the mirror and she's putting on her bindi, you know, and she's getting ready for her testimony. It's so, it was so beautiful. It was just so powerful, you know, and it's when she walks inside that courtroom and she kind of <laughs> is hanging her head high, you know, and she comes out and that, and she, when, I, I think my, one of my favorite lines is, is uh, when she says, um, I'm going to go eat mangoes, you know, so... <laughs> And I think it's true, documentary and narrative filmmakers, sometimes they choose great stories, sometimes great yeah. stories choose you. Yes. And I think what Kieran gave you as a filmmaker and the way you responded to her offering is remarkable. So I want to thank Kieran, who is not here, um, but I also want to thank uh, Nisha for making this film. Thank you so much for thank making so a movie much. and sharing it with thank us. Thank you, thank you.